today's topic is known as rag retrieval augmented generation you will get the meaning of this while we go through this particular session you'll understand what exactly retrieval mean what exactly augmenting that retrieved documents mean what exactly generating mean so in short this is known as rag you will hear this term rag multiple times when you are going through this uh, lang chain or large language models or generative ai courses rag is one of the most important uh, topic because of its uh, applications and it's very easy to understand if we understand in a particular structured manner you will never forget what is happening inside rag so let us try to make it very easy by splitting it into multiple uh, sub steps so why rag is required do you really feel that the llm generates the output from a very broad or generic context because large language models have been trained on the whole internet of data if you ask any question or a query to the large language model let us suppose your question is very specific to your company your domain your team within that team your particular one application you are asking a question related to that very very niche like say this is the whole internet of data in that this is what is specific to your company this is what is specific to your domain within that company this is what is specific to your team do you think large language model is going to understand this and give every answer related to whatever you are asking here do you think it is going to limit its generation based on this data only or based on this particular domain only it's impossible isn't it large language model when you ask any question it will try to give you very very generic answer because it is generating the output based on the model that it has received and the model has been trained on the whole internet of data so how do you make this large language model the reasoning capacity of large language model how do you use that on your private documents this is a very big question that a lot of companies are asking right now what is it i do not want to expose my data to a large language model or large language model is already available but it was never trained on my data large language model has been trained on the internet of data but my company's internal documents were never exposed to the general internet of data do you agree my company's secured private documents are there do you think large language model no matter how much amount of data that they have been trained on have they ever seen my company's secured private documents have they seen my confidential agreements i have some agreement with a company another company or four five vendors and each agreement is around 50 to 100 page long and i want to ask some questions on this agreement do you think a large language model will understand my agreement do you think in its trained data in the training data of large language model these kind of agreements do you think would it be containing them we never know so if you want to use the reasoning capacity of large language model on your private documents how do you do that that's one of the biggest question i think that was a question that we were discussing also isn't it so for more accurate results large language model often need user specific data if you want to get an accurate result then large language model has to understand the user specific data very very specific niche data that you are talking about that is what large language model has to see so rag retrieval augmented generation we are augmenting our documents we are augmenting we are telling the large language model that look at my documents you generate the output based on my documents that are augmented to you so what these large language model will do it will retrieve the private documents for the large language model generation step when the large language model is generating your output it will retrieve your private documents one of the biggest issue with large language model is they suffer from one problem called hallucination what is hallucination in general what is hallucination hallucination means we think that there is something over there but it is not really there hallucination means just imagining something which is not present large language models often suffer from this problem of hallucination if you ask a question very rarely a large language model will say that i don't know the answer most of the times it will give you the answer have you observed it most of the times the large language model will give you the answer but the wrong answers are generated due to this problem of hallucination large language model thinks that okay this is the right answer and sometimes it tries to justify that as well let us suppose if you ask large language model who is the 125th president of us maybe based on its uh, input sometimes it will say that okay 125th president not yet elected or something but sometimes it will find some answer it will find one president name let's say george bush and then it starts justifying it 125th president is george bush or somebody like that so hallucination is what large language model generating these uh, faulty or uh, incorrect nonsensical irrelevant text remember large language model doesn't have any understanding at the core of it once again you understand what is the core of a large language model it takes the sequence of tokens as input and it generates the next token next token next token next token as output so while it is generating so simply llm generates the text from the patterns it has seen that's it it doesn't have the true understanding 
it looks like it is understanding the question that we are asking it looks like when we say 125th us president we think that large language model understands who is a us president what is the number 125 etc but that is not true it just generates the next token in this process it may suffer from a problem called hallucination now to reduce this hallucination you can limit what large language model is looking into so what rag does retrieval augmented generation what it will do is do not look at the whole data as input you use your capacity of generating the next token in the output but to generate the next token in the output always use my input the input that i am passing on to you the documents that i am augmenting right now look at those augment uh, augmented documents and then you give me the final result based on the documents that i have presented to you that means if i am asking a question on my confidential agreements with my vendors if i am doing the usual large language model way i may get very much random hallucinated answers but if i am using rag in rag if i augment these documents to large language model then the answers will be spot on have you understood the need for rag what is the need why we need rag the main problem is large language model cannot have access to our company data or confidential data large language models often suffer from hallucination they generate broad output which may not really connect to our niche area to answer these two questions we introduce rag even though it says retrieval augmented generation mostly the main focus will be on retrieval once you retrieve the documents you can always generate generation is simple you once you retrieve all the relevant documents so how rag works is you give all your companies confidential agreements and then uh, you retrieve like you ask a question for this question maybe the answer is in page number 25 the answer is in page number 50 a part of answer another part of answer is in page number 63 so these three pieces of document will be retrieved once you retrieve it you can always summarize it that summary large language model can generate so retrieval augmented generation how it works it has five steps let us go through each step by step process rag has five steps you load the data you split the data into smaller chunks smaller pieces then we convert creating embedding means converting the text data into numerical vector format you understand what is embedding isn't it what is an embedding the vector form converting the text data into vector form once you have the vectors you have to store them in a database usually we work with rdbms relational shape databases but most of our data is stored in vector form so there are certain vector databases there are some databases that work very well with this type of vector data and then finally you retrieve the relevant information from the database all these five steps one by one one by one step we will go in a case study one by one we will write the code for all these so once again what are the five steps you load the data data loading can be from any source do you remember in the last session we have discussed loading the data from pdf files loading the data from html loading the data from doc files loading the data from multiple sources isn't it there are multiple integrators you can load the data from markdown file you load your data wherever whichever source you have and uh, your lan chain will provide multiple options to connect from any data source in this world once you load the data you split the data into smaller chunks you divide the data into smaller chunks so how that is done we are going to see so basically splitting the data into smaller chunks means maybe i will split the whole document let's say if there are 50 pages i will try to split the data into 50 pieces okay so how much should be the chunk size how many chunks we have to break that also we'll see once you break the data into smaller chunks you convert the text data into numerical vectors those are known as those numerical vectors are known as embeddings you you convert the data into embeddings once you have the data in the form of embeddings or the vectors store them in a vector database what is a vector database what are different type of vector databases available that also we are going to see once you store the data in the vector database you try to like finally retrieval what is retrieval you have a question what are the chunks that are related to this question that chunks of information will be retrieved until now i'm talking about retrieval only and later on once you retrieve all these documents you can supply this to a large language model and ask it to summarize these documents so when i ask a question don't look for the answer in the regular manner don't look for the answer in the usual way that you generate an answer no don't generate the answer from that when i ask a question generate the answer from the related chunks of data that i have provided that way i'm augmenting my private documents so that i can get very niche answers and this vector database will be in our local database so this is totally secured the moment i say private documents we are kind of we have to be little careful do you agree you cannot send these private documents anywhere the whole point of rag itself is i want my large language model to work on my private documents so this database has to be on our local disk so definitely it will not be exposed to anybody so let us go through all these steps one by one one by one one by one 
So let's go to the code file. We will work with one example. All of you, do you have the code file with you? I'm keeping the code file link in the chat window. Access it. So this is the code file. Install the packages. You must give your uh, OpenAI or Cohere API key. Since if you are serious about this course, I think uh, spending $10 is not a big deal for you. My sincere suggestion is you get this OpenAI API key. I think with $10, you can almost uh, work with it for uh, one year of exercises. I have observed that OpenAI is one of the most accurate one until now. I think uh, OpenAI Playground, is it? OpenAI API key. Platform.openai, I guess. Platform. This is the one. Login. Let me log in. So if you go to platform.openai.com, here you have something called uh, API keys. Somewhere if I go to API keys, here you have to create a new API key. For that, it is not a free one. It is a paid one, but it's not that costly. For example, if you see my last month whole usage, I've been using excessively, but still my bill is not that high. Last month, it costed me $1. Okay. Last to last month, I think I have used it uh, for larger applications. It costed me $9, which is quite cheap. I have used for hell lot of applications. Actually, I have trained it on a large amount of data, hell lot of uh, tokens that I have generated. I have used it very extensively even then. It costed me $9 in May. It costed me around $1 in June. It costed me $0.06 in July. I use it on a regular basis, almost GNA applications. Every day in, day out, I run them. But still, my bill last month is hardly $1.3. Okay. So it will be very, very reasonable price. I suggest you to get a key. Then uh, you work with the applications. It will be very easy for you. I mean, the results will be very accurate if you're using this. Now, this is a helper function called pretty print. So when you're printing the documents, often you will see that they are going very, very lengthy. So just to make it look a little better, I have used this helper function. Otherwise, you can simply ignore this function. This is not a big deal. Now, let us go through all the steps in the rag. So let me write rag steps. Once you have imported all of them, once you have set the cohere key as well, give me a confirmation, I will get started with all these rag steps. Once I go through these rag steps, you will also feel that it's not that difficult. Like you will also be really comfortable with it. Done. Okay. What is a uh, step one in rag? Step one is loading the data. It is also known as document loading. Okay. Document loading or loading the data from any source that you have, okay? So here I'm working with a data set called employee agreement data. And this employee agreement is our confidential internal document. So if I'm asking any of the question related to employee agreement, I don't want my large language model to look at all the agreements in this world based on that hallucinate and give me a generic answer. If I ask, I have some strict policies for my employees. I have very confidential or very different policies compared to other companies. So if I ask any question related to employee agreement, I want my answers from my document. I don't really want it from the whole world of documents. Okay, let us suppose there is one leave policy. Let us suppose there is one uh, policy for, uh, let's say, uh, applying for a bonus. Different, different policies are there, which are very specific to my company. Then how do I make sure that large language model is giving the output only from my data set? Okay. The code file the is code not file. opening in the browser. Is that the case with everybody? Quickly check that. Is that the case with everybody? Quickly confirm anybody else. Nobody is opening the code file. Sir, it is opening for me. It's opening. Yeah, try yes. that once again. Background here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let us start with uh, our. Uh, First step, which is a document loading step. So in this document loading, I'm trying to load the employee agreement. So the data set name is uh, employee agreement. Have you understood the problem statement here is any question that I asked, I want my large language model to give preference to only this employee agreement data 
or the PDF file. And if I ask any random questions, who is the first president of US? Now the output should be the answer should be I don't know the answer. The large language model or the application that we are going to build here, it should not answer any other question than this one. It is a very customized app that is going to answer very private questions that are related to my private documents. Nothing else should be answered. Okay. So I would say my employee agreement dot PDF. This is what I want to import. Okay. So this is a file that I have kept employee agreement dot PDF. And as usual, if you want to load a PDF, how do you do it from Langchain document loaders? We have discussed this last time from Langchain document loaders, import by PDF loader, loader is by PDF loader. And how many pages are there in my employee agreement document? So it looks like this particular file is not imported employee agreement. Let me do it separately here. There you go. It says employee agreement dot PDF. It's there. Employee agreement dot PDF. Let me check that once again. Employee agreement dot PDF is there. Okay. Now let us try to execute this. Can somebody tell me what is the error? Py PDF package not found. Pip install py PDF. What I should do here? Help me. What's the step that I have to take here for making this work? When we get an error, that's the install. Yeah, if I pip install py PDF. That is a package that you have to install for us to read any PDF documents. All right. And then this time it should work. There are 13 pages in this employee agreement data. Now, if you want to really see the text data, or if you want to see how many words are there, how many length, uh, how many lines are there, how many characters are there, what we can do is we can go through each and every page. We can put it on a very big uh, string file. We can put it in a big text file. Let us say, if I say my full text is blank for page in pages, I'll go to every page. Full text is equal to page plus place content. That means I'll take the page content from every page and then try to keep it in the full text. Okay. So finally, if I look at my overall pages, 13 pages will be there. Uh, full text, how many lines will be there? How many words will be there? We can even count the characters. So that will be simply length of the full text. So there are 13 pages, 369 lines. There are 4,481 words. There are 29,870 characters in this data. Now the beauty of RAG is the RAG application is going to look at only these words and nothing else. Yes, it will generate the output. Yes, it will try to synthesize some words. It will try to give meaning to these uh, chunks of data and try to give us the final result. But the result will be very, very specific to these 13 pages, not just 13 pages, not just one file. We can load multiple files also. Later on, I'm going to show you how do you load n number of files and limit your large language models thinking capability to these files only. So that is step one, load the data. What is step two? Try to recollect what is step two. Once you load the data, you're supposed to split the data into smaller chunks. Okay. Split the data into smaller chunks. This is also known as chunking. Why we have to split the data into smaller chunks? Because the whole data may not be the answer. In RAG, you get the data, you split the data into smaller chunks. Once you ask the question, we are going to finally retrieve the answer or retrieve the chunk that is related to the question so that we can generate the answer. So the answer may not require the whole of the data. The answer requires smaller chunks of pieces of data only. So that is why we have to chunk the data. We have to cut the data into smaller pieces so that we can later on retrieve those smaller pieces and then put all of them together to answer the question that the user has asked. So how do you split the data into smaller chunks by using something called recursive character text splitter. So from Langchain text splitter, import recursive character text splitter. So this is the package that we have to use. Then I would say my text splitter is equal to recursive character text splitter chunk size. In each chunk, I want to have 300 characters. So overall, there are 29,817 characters are there. In each chunk, I will be taking 300 characters. So roughly around 100 or 100, and 100 uh, chunks will be coming overall because 300 into 100 is almost like 30,000. So 100 chunks we are making. And there's something called chunk overlap. Chunk overlap equal to 30. That means ideally, if I'm saying chunk size is 300, the first 300 characters will be chunk one. 301 to 600 will be chunk two. 601 to 900 will be chunk three. But if I say chunk overlap is 30, what if my answer is right at the end of the chunk? Then I may not get accurate answers. So better to give chunk overlap. That means first chunk will be character one to character 300. The second chunk will be 272. Uh, 
yes. So one to three hundred will be first chunk, but the second chunk doesn't start here. Chunk overlap is thirty. I have given. Usually, chunk overlap it is suggested that you keep the chunk overlap ten to twenty percent. So I have kept ten percent as chunk overlap. So chunk two will start from here. Two seventy to two seventy plus three hundred five seventy. What about chunk three? It will be from five forty to your eight forty. So there is some chunk overlap by chance if the answer is somewhere over here then we are not going to lose a lot of information now how do you choose the chunk size choose chunk size usually between 300 like there is no standard way that you have to you must choose this as the chunk size but depending on the data size that you have if you feel the answer that we may have to generate involves a hell lot of text so every question the user will ask we have to give or we have to look into a lot of text and there are lengthy sentences the context length is really high then keep the chunk size high or if you feel smaller chunks are fine the answer will be short answers then you can keep the chunk size as low so usually this chunk is number of characters number of characters are 300 usually what is suggested here is chunk size and chunk overlap chunk size you choose somewhere from 300 to 3000 the reason for that is let's say if you choose chunk size as 3000 characters Roughly, how many words will generate out of this? Tell me, three thousand characters will carry how many words? I'm thinking each word is, let's say, length of ten, then three hundred words. So three hundred words will roughly kind of give us around four hundred tokens. Now each chunk size is having four hundred tokens. When the user asks the question, we will find out what are the chunks that are having the answer. Usually, we get four chunks, so four four hundred tokens, almost like sixteen hundred. Almost like fifteen hundred tokens we can take as input. Usually, the OpenAI and the other large language models they have chunk size as one of the or not chunk size or the token size as the one of the parameter where you cannot go beyond certain token size. So to do, to limit that token size, so we have to also think about giving these values as input and generating the output later on. So usually, the best chunk size that you can choose for most of the problems. So nobody has said that there is no rule that you have to choose this only. But usually, the best chunk size that you can choose is somewhere between three hundred to three thousand. Don't choose the chunk size to be too high. If you choose the chunk size to be too high, even if you retrieve the answer, you cannot pass it on to a large language model for summarization. Tell me, if I choose the chunk size too high, what is the issue? If I choose the chunk size to be three billion characters, then when I am retrieving the answer, let us suppose the first chunk is the answer. The first chunk itself will have several tokens, isn't it? It has these many tokens. Now these many tokens, can you give a large language model and ask for it to generate the answer or synthesize the answer out of this? What will be the issue from the large language model? What it will say if you give these many characters as input, these many tokens as input? So the token size is uh, the token size is too much. So keeping that in mind, you have to choose the chunk size somewhere between three hundred to three thousand. Am I making sense here? Why we are choosing a slightly medium chunk size? Because we want this to be understood by a large language model later on. Chunk overlap. Usually, people say that go for ten percent to twenty percent. When you are in doubt, maybe go for a slightly higher overlap. If you are going for a higher overlap, too many chunks will be there. So ten percent is decent, or you can choose to have fifteen percent or twenty percent. That number you have to find. If I put forty-five here, that means fifty percent, fifteen percent is the overlap. If I am choosing thirty here, it is the ten percent overlap. So these many characters are there. My chunk size is three hundred. Since there is an overlap. I will get beyond hundred as well, so I may get around one twenty or one thirty chunks. One thirty three chunks of data is there. Step one is loading your data. Step two is splitting the data into smaller chunks, and there is some science behind that as well. We have to be careful in choosing the chunk size. Okay, somewhere between three hundred to three thousand. Once you load the data, once you split the data into chunks, what is step three? Try to recollect. Step three is now. Right now, this data is text data. So try to recollect. What is the next step? Converting this text data into embeddings. numerical data. What is what is that step called? Create embeddings. Create embeddings. So how do you create embeddings from LangChain? So there are multiple embeddings that are provided by these models. We don't need to create those embeddings manually. If you give this uh, text data to either OpenAI or Cohere, they also provide embedding models. They not only provide generation models. These large language models have their own embedding models. That means OpenAI converts each text into some length document, maybe around fourteen hundred vector length. Your Cohere converts each text 
or the text data into vector form, which is of the size 4000 like that. Each of these large language models have their own embeddings. Models are also available. So from LangChain embeddings, you import either OpenAI embeddings or Cohere embeddings. That is it. Here, you just declare this. Once you do this, automatically embedding model, whatever are the embeddings, that will be instantiated. Once you create these embeddings, you store the embeddings. That is the next step. Step four is I have created the embeddings. After creating the embeddings, what is the next step? Store the embeddings. Store the vectors in a store the embeddings. In a what is that called? What is the keyword there? In a vector database. We know relational databases. Those relational databases are having tables. You have primary key. You have secondary key, tables are related, ERP diagrams, etc., etc. They are very much fine-tuned for relational or tabular data. But for us, the data is all vectors only. So there are n number of vector databases that are available. Like the way you have MX SQL, MySQL, Oracle database, and then you have uh, Microsoft database like that. There are several databases that are available, database servers, SQL servers. Similarly, in vector databases also, there are several databases that are available. Each one of them will be having subtle differences from the other one. Okay, some of them are open source, some of them are paid. Just like your usual SQL have multiple database options available. Here also you have multiple vector database options available. Almost all of them work the similar way. We will work with a couple of vector databases in our course. So let us start with the, one of the most prominently used vector database called Chroma. So we will install Chroma DB. I will keep this in a separate cell here. Install Chroma DB. And then once you install Chroma DB, we will say from Langchain Vector Databases. From Langchain Vector Databases or Vector Stores, import Chroma Database. And then we have to tell that use this embedding function, use these uh, chunks. So take the chunks as input. Take the embeddings as input. In fact, step three and step four are kind of one step only from the point of view of programming. Step three, step four happen together. So if you write, I'm creating a new database called employee rules database, chroma dot from documents, take my chunks as input, 133 chunks of data. Use this embedding function. So open AI embeddings, that means open AI embeddings would have some rule. That means open AI converts every document into a vector of length, a certain length. So try to convert using OpenAI embedding style and persistent directory. My directory name should be this one. So locally, a database will be created. Once I execute this, right now I haven't executed. Once I execute this, there will be one employee rules database that will be created locally. Once that is created from there, we will try to retrieve the documents. Have you understood this step, all of you? Take my chunks as input, use this embeddings, and then store them in my directory. So once I do this, embeddings is not defined. We have to first execute this. Now it will work. That's it. Database will be created. Employee rules database. And this is SQLite 3. This is my database file name, vector database. A vector database is fine tuned or it is created to work with this type of vector data. And in large language models, vector databases are very, very famous because the basic step in large language model is converting the data into text and the text converting text data into numbers and the numbers are stored as vectors. That is why these vector databases work effectively in large language models for retrieval of the data, for storing of the data, for getting the results quite quickly for processing of the data. We can work with uh, RDBMS as well. No problem with that, but these are much, much better compared to them for these type of vector data. This is step four, store the embeddings in a vector database. What is step five? Once you store them, the step five, the last step is retrieval once you store the vectors in the vector databases you can retrieve the documents based on the questions that the user is asking i would say this is retrieval only it will not generate any answer by the way it will just retrieve the chunks of the documents how retrieval works when a person asks a question that question will also be converted into some kind of vector and the vector comparison or the vector similarity search is done Whichever vectors in this vector database are similar to the question vector, those chunks will be given to you as output. Let me do that once again. So what happens if I say my retriever, I have to declare my retriever. My retriever is, you can give any name. My retriever is employee rules database as retriever. This is the declaration. 
my result is retriever get relevant documents is a function what does this function do if you ask what is the policy for sick leaves now this question i don't want my large language model to answer from a whole world of data if i go to chat gpt if i ask this question what is the policy for sick leaves whether it knows the answer or not whether it knows the context or not it will give me some answer eligibility etc 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 i don't want my application behave in this manner this is a very broad generic answer nobody wants to see this answer this is not useful but if i want my large language model to generate the answer if it has the answer about the sick leaves in the document employee agreement document that i have given then it must give the answer otherwise it should say that sorry i don't know the answer you can mention top 3 i want to return three documents but by default i think it returns four documents so we will leave it as it is what is the policy for sick leaves so simply if i ask that question remember it is not answering the question this is called retrieval only what is retrieval it is retrieving this document this document as well as this document i think how many documents it has retrieved 1 2 3 4 documents it has retrieved it has retrieved four documents by default it is retrieving four documents saying that these are the four documents where employee sick leaves related information is present so if you ask a question what is the policy for employee sick leaves what happens behind the scenes is this question will also be converted into a vector embedding so this is your question that you are asking this is the sorry i think this is the question that the user is asking that question will also be converted into embedding sorry this is the question this is converted to embeddings those embeddings are compared there is some similarity score that is calculated there are multiple similarity scores or if you have a vector x1 x2 x or x1 y1 z1 you have another vector x2 y2 z2 you can always find the simple similarity by calculating the distance between them you can calculate the euclidean distance you can consider these as two points and then you can find the distance between them like that or cosine similarity some kind of similarity score or correlation or jacobian distance some kind of similarity score is calculated based on the similarity score the chunks that are containing the most similar pieces of information related to this question they have been returned here at a later point of time we are going to supply these four documents of information to our large language model we ask it to simply summarize the output synthesize the output based on this information definitely it will not be the answer that we are getting like this here it will be the answer related to this one have you now understood why rag is important if you are focusing only on your private documents we want large language model to be working totally privately it's almost like our private gpt i want chat gpt to work only on my data sets here we have trained the model or we have uh, augmented one document here one pdf we can augment multiple pdfs also that's not a big deal so those are the steps in retrieval later on there is one retrieval q and a chain what it will do is it will not only retrieve it will also answer your questions based on the retrieved documents so the ultimate thing would be taking all this synthesizing a two line or a three line answer for whatever is the question that you have asked for so as of now we are working with a retrieval later on i will discuss how do we come out with an answer just by summarizing this retrieved documents are you with me everyone have you understood what i'm talking here any quick questions what is the function of top k and so top... so basically when we are asking for it to retrieve it can retrieve four documents by default if you want to retrieve five documents if you want to retrieve 10 documents okay if you feel that the answer not document chunks the answer may be present beyond four chunks then i would say my top underscore k equal to 10 it'll try to retrieve 10 chunks of data but i feel that this is a kind of ignored this has a small bug in this particular function it is by default retrieving only four even if i say let us suppose if i want to limit it to one document if i say top k equal to 1 it should retrieve only one document so somehow this top k is not working but in future that bug will be fixed and whatever you mention as a top k those many chunks will be retrieved thank you sir rag is one of the most widely used one like the way earlier we were discussing right i want my large language model to completely be looking at my document my private documents completely be answering everything depending on my data that is why a lot of companies are using rag rag is one of the most widely used application within the llm space and it is very simple to set up let us do one more rag quickly you help me with this because 
whatever exercises that we are doing here, we just want to be very comfortable with them. Now you understood all the five steps. Can we recollect the steps? Tell me the steps. Step one. What is step one? Sorry. Document loading from any stores. Step two. What is step two? Step two. Once you load the document, can we work with the full data as it is? No. Split the documents into chunks. Step three. Step three. Once you split the data into chunks, can we directly work with the text data? No. You're supposed to embedding. create embeddings. Once you create the embeddings, what is your next step? Step four is to similarity. Mm, similarity. Can you directly find the similarity once you find the embeddings? You have to keep these embeddings. Yeah. Store them in. Oh. Store the embedding in vector database. Vector database. Once you have stored the embeddings in the vector database, step five is retrieve the documents based on based on similarity. Are you comfortable with this? Shall we do one more example quickly? Or can you do any example? Now let me take one more PDF file. This time the file name is basel.pdf. Basel norms. Do you know basel norms? Is that the correct spelling? B A S E L. Basel norms. Yeah. Let me get the file here first. Wget basel norms file. I got it. Then I would say my loader equal to PDF loader. Let me just print the length of the pages. How many pages are there? 77 pages are there. Slightly larger data set. It may take a little bit of time while retrieving. Now, after that, what is the next step? From Langchain, what is the one that you are going to get for splitting it into chunks? What is the function? Recursive text splitter. Okay. From Langchain dot text splitter, import recursive text splitter, chunk size. So right now, overall 77 pages are there. So maybe I will keep the chunk size as slightly higher, 700 or 1000. And then chunk overlap, what is the suggested value for chunk overlap? How much should be the overlap? Roughly? 70, sir. 70, so 10% to 20%. So overall, how many chunks will be there? Let us check. The number of chunks are 393 chunks, okay, of data. Now, whether 700 is the right answer, is it the only one that we have to give? No, roughly, you can take somewhere between uh, 300 to 3000. That is what worked best for most of the applications that I have built until now. But nobody tells you like this is the right answer, you should go for it. Maybe when we are working on building some applications, we have to try a couple of values, whichever working best, we have to choose that. Then once you are done with splitting the data into chunks, you create the embedding. So from Langchain, so try to recollect from Langchain embeddings, either open embeddings or cohere embeddings. By the way, when you are executing, are you using cohere when you are executing? Yeah, you must be giving the cohere key and yes. all that. Yeah. So once you declare that embeddings, actually step three and step four are together, embedding creation and storing in the database. From Langchain, Chroma is one of the most widely used database. There's one more database called FIES, F-A-I-E-S-S, I guess. Facebook-based uh, vector database, F-A-I-E-S-S, a vector database. This is also very famous. We In another application, we will use this one. Once you know how to use one vector database, you can use any vector database because the basic function of Langchain is uh, to give you that flexibility to change from one module to other module, from one uh, function to other function, one package to other package, without a lot of change in the code. So you can use Chroma database or FICE database. And then take my chunks of data, take my embeddings function, and then Basel norm DB is what I want you to create. And this code, it says that I think this is a kind of syntax. It tells us that this is a persistent directory. It is called locally. You store the information in this basal norms db vector database and then you can ask the question let's say i would say you have to declare the retriever can you recollect what is the code for retriever i would say my retriever is equal to basal norms db dot as retriever isn't it so i would say my retriever is equal to basal norms db as retriever now if i'm asking the question what is the percentage of minimum capital requirement tell me what percentage is the minimum capital requirement in a bank if all the customers are storing 10 crores can they go and invest all the 10 crores in the market to make money? Or there is a percentage of minimum capital that they have to keep aside. Does anyone know how much is the minimum capital every bank has to keep aside? They should not use it anywhere. Almost like an emergency fund they have to keep aside. How much is that? How much is that? 
I think 8%, 8% of whatever we are saving in the bank. Bank can invest in other products, but they cannot use 8% of the data. Now what I'm trying to do, I am not really getting the answer. The output will not be like bank has to keep aside 8%. There will not be a proper output or the answer to the question that you have asked. You will not get that as the answer. What will you get as the answer? Tell me for this, what will be the answer that we will get? What will be the result of this query that we have made? What so is it the will get documents where this answer is contained. Exactly. That is what I'm looking for. That's a perfect answer. It will get the relevant chunks of documents where this question may have answered. So four documents exactly will be given to you. Since we are printing the other ones also. So you have four documents, document one. So let me store this result. So I will print this result separately here. Document one, page number 76, document two, document two, page number 19, where it says that before the mentor contribute to the COIP capital, et cetera, et cetera. It may not be always right answer because it is trying to convert this also into some kind of numerical vector, whichever vector has the maximum, uh, what do you call the maximum amount of similarity, it is trying to get this. So global regulatory framework, resilient banking system, individual bank system, conversation standards, et cetera, loss absorbing ratios. Somewhere I'm just looking for that 8% somewhere. Minimum, somewhere it's saying minimum capital, like 8%, 8%, 8%. Like, yes, these are all like PDF converted to document. So this is the, basically it must be a table. It is saying that uh, small bank, medium bank, private bank, all of them 8%, 8%, 8%. So these are the four documents where the answer to your question is related to. Now, what we need to do is we have to use these documents. Either you can compress all these documents or you can summarize or you can send these four documents to a large language model and say that you simply summarize them and give me. Large language model will happily summarize and give you. So that is the whole point of RAG. Almost in every company nowadays, everybody is thinking of a RAG application. You go back and you check wherever you can apply this RAG. Especially if you're working with the text documents data, RAG will be the first kind of uh, model or the task that you can consider to implement, okay? Now, there is a little bit of advancement that we can do in RAG. Sometimes what happens is this question that you have asked, maybe your intention is different, but uh, this converted, when it got converted into vector embeddings, it did not really keep whatever our intention was. So because your answer, the documents that you are retrieving, they totally depend on uh, what your question is. By mistake, we write a uh, little bit here and there. The documents that are got getting uh, retrieved are entirely different or they are not related to the question that we really intended to ask. Now to address that issue, there is something called multi-query retriever. What it will do is, it will take our question, it will generate three or four questions related to this question. It will try to ask the same question, what percentage is the minimum capital requirement? What is the minimum capital requirement in banks? Or how much is the minimum capital requirement? Like that, just by changing the words here and there, keeping the same meaning, it will try to generate three or four more questions on whatever we have asked. Now for all those questions, we convert them into vectors or this whole text with all the questions will be converted to vectors, one vector. That vector will be now compared to the vector database and then the documents will be retrieved. Usually it is said that instead of asking the question in one go like this, it is suggested that you use something called the multi-query retriever. Now, if you want to generate multiple questions from one question for that, you need a large language model who will generate multiple questions from one question who will change the wording for that. We need a large language model. So that is also known as large language model based retriever. So how does that work? It is also known as multi query retriever or large language model based retriever. Let me quickly show you that. So let's do a quick document loading. My loader is equal to, let's say I want to work with Wikipedia. So for that, I have to install pip install Wikipedia. Let us suppose I want to get the information about MS Dhoni from Wikipedia. For that, I have to install Wikipedia. So this is loading. Wikipedia not defined. Okay, after this, what is the next step? Here I have to say that is from blank chain document loaders, import Wikipedia. Documents are ready. Once the documents are ready, now it should come naturally to you. Step one, loading the data. 
data loading followed by step two splitting the data into i know i'm repeating it multiple times but it will be useful into chunks how do we do that from lang chain text splitter recursive text splitter i'm taking the chunk size as 500 chunk overlap is 50 274 documents are there and then creating the embeddings from lang chain embeddings cohere embeddings or open ai embeddings i will go with open ai embeddings and then storing them in a, a database so my embeddings database is chroma database take the docs ms Doni related docs take the embeddings persistent directories wikipedia database now retriever i will write it slightly differently now this is not a usual retriever earlier i used to say that wikidb dot as retriever but now i want to do a llm based retriever so first i will define my retriever equal to simple words retriever is equal to retriever this is a simple retriever which is my wikipedia data embeddings database dot retriever or as retriever so that is a simple one but now on top of it i will create one more so this is a usual retriever and then whatever question that we ask we used to retrieve the documents from the based on this retriever but now on top of it i'm creating another function which is known as llm based retriever i'm naming this as llm based retriever so here the function name is multi query retriever what is multi query retriever it will do it will take your retriever it will take a large language model. That means I have to define a large language model. I will say my large language model is equal to OpenAI. Now, what is the use of this? OpenAI not defined. So how do I address this? From Langchain LLMs, you import OpenAI and go here both. Now, what, do we, what is the use of this LLM based retriever? This LLM based retriever is a multi query retriever. If I try to print and see what's happening inside of this, this is a multi query retriever. The template that is inside of this, let me try to do a print or a pretty print. No, the previous one was better. It says that you take a user input question. You are an AI language model assistant. Your task is to generate three different versions of the given user question to retrieve the relevant documents from a vector database. Have you understood? You are an AI language model assistant. Your task is to generate three different versions of the given user question to retrieve the relevant documents from the vector database. By generating multiple perspectives on the user question, from multiple perspectives, you generate the questions. Your goal is to help the user to overcome some of the limitations of distance-based similarity search. These distance-based similarity search, they just look at your question, convert it into a vector, and then they will try to retrieve the relevant documents. There are some limitations. So your goal is to overcome them so that you create such questions so that the user question will be answered accurately. Provide the alternative questions separated by new lines from the original question. Original question is given here. All right. So let us try to test it. So I want to get my relevant documents or related documents. So my related documents. So LLM based retriever, I have asked this question. First question, what is the date of birth of Dhoni? Usually, it has to answer the date of birth of Dhoni as one question. But if I try to see what is happening inside, let's say if I try to see what are the three questions that are generated inside, I think there is one logging that we can do to find out what is happening inside. Right now, I don't remember that code. Let me quickly copy paste that. There is some kind of logging that we can check what to see what is happening inside this multi-query retriever. So let me do this first. I'm doing like inside the multi-query retriever. I'm just uh, checking the information. I'm keeping it somewhere in this logging. Then if I try to execute this, so it is giving us this extra information. So when I say, what is the date of birth of Dhoni? It is generating this question. When was Dhoni born? What is the date of birth of for uh, Dhoni? Can you tell me Dhoni's date of birth? So these three questions are generated and their vectors are generated. Maybe they, these vectors are pulled. Maybe the average vector is taken as the final question. And then the comparison is done. If you do it this way, the answers will be much more perfect. I'm not saying that always you will get the best answer, but the thing is it will be much, much better. A lot of people are following this multi-query retriever than the original, the simple plain retriever. This is harmless. But however, when you are generating these questions, definitely you are sending, you're taking the help of large language model. That is going to cost you a little bit, but that is not uh, too many tokens. Just from, uh, these are like uh, 10 tokens. And these are like 30 or 40 tokens. So it's not a very 
big deal in terms of tokens as well. So usually people are using multi query retriever instead of the simple retriever. Let us take one more question. I want to know what are the related documents? What are the related documents for question two? Question two is which sport does Dhoni play? Maybe this uh, spelling mistake is there or maybe my grammar is wrong or maybe active voice, passive voice. Like I did not write it in a perfect English manner, but still I want to get the best results out of it. So what does this multi query retrieval do? It will create the questions that are related to this. What is the Dhoni's preferred sport? Which sport is associated with Dhoni? Now this is a correct answer, question to ask. If you really want to get the answer as Dhoni plays cricket, this is a question we should be giving, but I did not really write that question. Multi query retriever has created it. Can you tell me the sport that Dhoni plays? Maybe this is even a better way of writing. So these are the three questions that got generated from one question. From these three questions, vectors will be generated. Their vectors, uh, those vectors, probably they may get pulled into one vector. That vector is compared with the vector database. The relevant documents are extracted. And these are your relevant documents. Now, again, this is too much of text. I don't want to give this much of text to my user. And my user is not really looking for this much of text. When I say, what is the date of birth of Dhoni? The user doesn't want to go through this much. Like what is the date of birth of Dhoni? This is too much of information. I just want to know what is his date of birth, date, month, year, max to max that. Or maybe you can simply say Dhoni was born on this particular date. When I say which sport Dhoni plays, I simply want to get the answer as he plays cricket. That's it. I don't want to give this as the answer. Remember, this is not question and answering yet. We are in the stage of retrieval only. Now from this retrieval, we can do two things. One is contextual compression. We can compress these documents, summarize and give, or directly another best method is retrieval Q&A chain. Retrieval plus question and answer. You retrieve the documents and generate the answer from those retrieval documents. So before going to the ultimate retrieval Q&A chain, let me show you some other way, which is known as contextual compression. So how do you do the compression of these documents? For that, you need a large language model is equal to let's say open AI or cohere. Then you can define something called compressor, LLM chain extractor from LLM. You use this LLM for compression of the documents. That is one way of compressing the documents, giving one small output. This compressor also not the perfect way. It may still keep a hell lot of information, but if your requirement is keeping the information and just compressing it into a smaller piece, then you can use compressor. So I will say contextual compression retriever, use your base retriever, or base retriever is embeddings database retriever. Use your base compressor as your compressor, LLM chain extracted compressor. I think I have to import this. We haven't imported it from Langchain. What is this uh, compressors or this? Let me just uh, leave it. And once the error comes, then we will get a better LLM chain extractor not defined. So what is the package that it has from Langchain dot compressors, is it? Let me check. Okay, this is fine. From I'm just hoping Google Colab will suggest me from Langchain. Yes, contextual compressor retriever and retrieval document compressors. This is the one. Okay. Compression retriever is ready. Now you will say that my question, you can ask the question. Let's say I would say my compression retriever. Let's say result from compression, compressed uh, retriever equal to, this is the contextual compression retriever stored as compression retriever, get relevant documents for what is the date of birth of Dhoni. I'm hoping it'll get all the relevant documents and then try to compress and then try to give us the final result. So this is uh, this one compressed documents are somewhere here in metadata. There is one summary. It will store the all documents as well as summarized version as well. So this is the one. It still contains the information, but the thing is it is comparatively slightly lesser information. Like according to this large language model, it has summarized everything, but at least it starts with actual date of birth, 7th July, 1991. This is when Dhoni was born. It will start with this again. Until now, we are mostly focusing on retrieval only. And after retrieving, this is also a retriever only, but a compressed retriever. It will not only retrieve the document, in its metadata, it will store the summary of the compressed documents as well. 
now comes the actual ultimate solution that everybody is using rag which is known as retrieval q and a chain so what does a retrieval q and a chain will do it will not only retrieve your documents it will work as a q and a chain it will compress the documents summarize the documents and then answer your questions it looks like somebody is understanding your question and trying to generate the answer that you are looking for so from lang chain dot chains import retrieval q and a chain obviously you need a large language model for summarization so i would say my q and a chain is retrieval q and a from chain type use my large language model chain type equal to stuff so what does chain type equal to stuff mean you have four documents that are given as output stuffing means take all the four documents supply them to large language model get the output chain type equal to map reduce that means you take each document summarize it then you have four summaries take the summary of four summaries then supply it to a large language model but usually stuff is the one that is used i want to supply the whole data to the large language model because already these are all small small chunks of data i am not really worried about the overall chunk size i don't want to really summarize them if i summarize them i may lose out the information at the base level so usually people use for summarization or for uh, getting the data from multiple documents we can use chain type equal to stuff stuff means you supply all these documents to the large language model my retriever is llm based retriever that means that multi query retriever so you remember we have defined already one llm based retriever or the multi query retriever this is the one that we are taking so what is happening here is from that retriever we are making it into a q and a chain you take this retriever get all the documents as the output i think a better way to write it would be this manner first you take this retriever get all the outputs and then what you need to do is stuff all those documents together stuffing means simply give the information from all those documents use this large language model to answer the question all right so this is the q and a chain now this q and a chain will answer your questions because it will retrieve it will stuff them together and then summarize the result to give you the answer retriever llm based retriever perhaps a comma is missing all right okay now if i ask what is my final docs that i will get or i'll simply say q and i chain because i'm confident that i'll get a single answer q and i chain query you have to write with this uh, keyword called query my query is what is the date of birth of doni so this info and all that lagging is happening that you can ignore so this is the output or let me store it in the output output or result then let me print result within that my result to avoid confusion i will say output within the output i want to print this result as simple as that what is the date of birth of doni the output is this one this info you can ignore because we are lagging or we are kind of storing what is happening inside that you can ignore doni's date of birth is 7 july 1981 it's not necessary that you will get exactly the same wording in every system if i reexecute i may get something like 7th july 1981 or some of you may get 1981 7 july but it will not be really retrieving all the documents it will not be really showing all that unnecessary information this looks like a granularized uh, kind of uh, created answer to answer your query if you ask another question like uh, what was that which sport did dhoni play which sport did dhoni play cricket as simple as a single word because for this question this is the word that is required did he win a world cup now again the answer depends on whether the wikipedia documents that we have passed on whether they have the information or not yes he did so what is happening inside a q and a chain is there is one prompt that is written so internally this q and a chain must be working with a prompt that means use all this information compress them answer them and most importantly it should contain something like let us suppose if we ask a totally unrelated question who is the who is the president of usa in 20 11 i don't know but if i ask this question actually the general large language model it knows or who was the so 
this is the guy but even though it knows the answer outside but in our documents it's not there it will say i don't know i don't know the answer this is what we want how is this working if i try to print the exact uh, prompt template that was there so let me try to give it a hint prompt template behind q and a chain which one is that what is the prompt template that is working this is a prompt template so inside q and a chain it says that use the following piece of context to answer the questions at the end what is the following piece of context the context received from the retrieved documents if you don't know the answer just say i don't know don't try to make up the answer here we are eliminating the hallucination don't hallucinate anything if you don't know the answer you can simply say no so that is how you make your large language model almost this is known as private gpt let us suppose you have all your company documents with you you put all your company documents at one place and then you ask any question related to your company documents the answer will be only from those company documents if you ask any other question the answer will be sorry i don't know the answer this is how you can get the information very specific to a particular domain a particular team or very niche like you can limit the whole large language models uh, ability or you can limit the whole large language models domain or the space into your document that you have given this is known as rag r a g retrieval augmented generation or retrieve the documents augment them to the large language model generate the output based on the retrieved documents only